So this brings us to the final concept for this course, beats. Standing waves occur due to spatial interference. So this is our equation for the standing wave. y of x t is equal to 2a sine kx cos omega t. We add the waves with the same frequency at each x to investigate the interference pattern. Now imagine choosing a point in space and adding two waves with slightly different frequencies. You'll get an interference pattern through time. This is called temporal interference. So for our travelling wave, we've chosen a point in space, so we've replaced kx plus phi with pi on 2. That can be anything because we can choose phi randomly to make this so. So this is wave 1, this is wave 2. The only difference between them is slightly different omegas, which is slightly different frequencies. So a sine pi on 2 minus omega 1t, we can write this as a cos 2 pi f 1t, and here we have a cos 2 pi f 2t. So the only reason we've put this pi on 2 here is so that we can make them into cos functions so that they're nice and easy to add. Okay, so y1 plus y2 is equal to a, pulling the amplitude out the front as a common factor, cos 2 pi f1 t plus cos 2 pi f2 t. So using our rules for adding cos functions, this becomes cos and then the sum of these things and then times cos minus the difference of these two things. So we end up with 2a cos 2 pi f1 plus f2 t times cos 2 pi f1 minus f2 t on 2. Now this is a big number. So as t changes, this cos function here oscillates between 1 and minus 1 relatively rapidly. f1 minus f2 on the other hand, for beats we choose to be a relatively small number. We choose f1 and f2 as very similar. So here, so this part of the cos function is oscillating very slowly between 1 and minus 1. So as we superimpose these functions, what we end up getting is here's the slow oscillation here due to that f1 minus f2, and here's the rapid oscillation due to the f1 plus f2. So this envelope, the dotted line here, is described by 2a cos 2 pi f1 minus f2 t on 2. So that's given by this part and this part of this function. This here is the rapid oscillation between 1 and minus 1. And so the period for this envelope function, that's the time from here to here to here, is given by 2 over f1 minus f2. That's just the inverse of this part of the function here as we've got the 2 pi there. So that's telling us how long it takes to cover 2 pi. Now what we actually hear if we're listening is we hear this maximum, we hear this minimum, we hear this maximum, we hear this minimum. So over that period we actually hear two beats. We hear two maximums and at the ends the two minimums. So the beat frequency that we hear is equal to f1 minus f2, the difference in the two frequencies. So beating is the periodic variation in amplitude of a given point due to the superposition of two waves having slightly different frequencies. The beat frequency is given by the difference in these frequencies. We've got the absolute value signs because it really doesn't matter which one we label as f1 and which one we label as f2. So to practice using this, try homework set 6 for Phys 112 on question 11 and for Phys 113 on question 14. What I've got here is two tuning forks, 703 hertz and 704 hertz. They're both screwed onto hollow boxes so that resonance will make the signal stronger. Now near these tuning forks we've got a microphone connected to the crow here which is converting the sound which it's getting into a signal on the screen. So you can see as I'm talking, the crow is giving a signal. Now let me show you what happens when I hit one of these tuning forks. So that's the signal from the 703 hertz tuning fork by itself. Now I want you to make a prediction about what signal you'll see when I hit both these tuning forks together. Remember this one's 703 hertz, this one's 704 hertz. Okay, write down your prediction now.